Hey everybody, welcome back to the Planes, Trains, and Comic Books channel. I'm Matt, and I'm doing another review. And this week, we're checking out Bone, the complete deluxe, or I guess it's the complete version. It's not the deluxe, because there is a better version of this, which I might pick up, because this was awesome. But uh, this is a thick, thick, big boy right here. Um, but first, if you guys wouldn't mind, like, share, subscribing, uh commenting down below let me know what you guys think of bone um but with that said let's get right to it bone we did a podcast episode on this uh let's see i don't know maybe a, a month ago we did the first volume of this and uh it was fun it was fun but you know uh I enjoyed it, which, you know, which is why I picked this up because I was like, oh, I want to know more about it. But uh, I've always heard that this was a epic fantasy tale. Some people said dark fantasy. Um, I didn't feel it was that dark, but it definitely had some cool moments. There was a dark moment, but it wasn't like a, a grim fantasy or anything like that where there's super messed up violence or something because this is uh, one of the best children's books, like, I could think of children's comics like this is uh, I don't know if it's all ages, but it's definitely like, you know, you, you could give it to a six year old and up and they would have fun reading it. And it's, there's intense situations, but nothing that, you know, nothing too graphic or anything in it. Um, so it's it's really unique because of that. It maintained that through the whole storyline as well. Um, it's this was a, a book that ran from, I believe. It was 91, 1991 to uh, 2000, you know, Tolkien. We were talking The Hobbit or something like that. Like, this has that same feel. It's a little bit more modern feeling because it was written in the 90s, obviously. But um, there's a lot of comedy in this and humor that kind of makes, sets it apart from some of those other uh, books. Because when it, like those books, the humor in them might be dated or like, like Lord of the Rings or something like that. Whereas in this, the humor is uh, kind of like a breather. Is at first it's very cute and humorous, and it gets darker and darker as it goes until it takes itself, or until it gets to a point where it's more serious. Um, and you know that the characters get more and more serious as it goes on as well. So it starts off kind of lighthearted and funny, and then moves into um, like a creepy dark fantasy story where you have you know good versus evil and all this kind of stuff so um this is gonna be a little bit of a spoiler review i'm not gonna hit everything in this book obviously uh but you should definitely check this out i really enjoyed it um but uh yeah let's start from the beginning i guess you know uh we got these characters right here this, this little white character he looks like a marshmallow or something like that uh he is phone bone he is the main character of this book and him and his cousins smiley bone and phony bone are from a place called boneville of all places and uh they got kicked out of that place because of some schemes phony bone does so phony bone is a bit of a uh ne'er-do-well he always comes up with schemes like quick get rich schemes where uh, you know, ends up screwing people over and then they don't like him. And so he gets ran out of town and his cousins join him. I guess maybe they also get ran out of town because of him or they just follow him to, so he's not alone. And uh, while they're wandering through the desert, they get set upon by a bunch of, uh, like a swarm of locusts. And they get lost in that. And uh, they end up winding up in a giant valley that like they don't they're like where the hell how do we get here you know <laughs> like they also get separated so phone bone ends up in the valley and he like knows that his cousins are there because he's following the cigars of smiley bone now that might be the only thing in this book that isn't okay for kids now is smiley bone does smoke cigars other than that it's pretty uh pretty tame so <laughs> if you're okay with you know like a character that isn't supposed to be like a, a, a role model smoking. Um, 
you know, that that's probably the, the most harsh thing in this book for a nowadays audience. But Phone Bone gets separated from his brother or his cousins in this uh this swarm of locusts. And uh but he knows he can follow them because he's following these cigars of Smiley Bone. And uh so he goes out in this valley and he meets a girl named Thorn. And instantly it kind of falls in love with her, like gets a little crush on her, right? Um, and so he's, you know, tags around her mainly just cause he's got a crush and she's nice. So he's following her, but we find out basically Thorne's got a grandma and Thorne's grandma is named Rose and she is aware something's going on in the Valley that's, uh, that shouldn't be going on. There, there are these rat creatures that have come back now. We don't know this at the beginning, but grandma has fought these rat creatures before and they're, they're supposed to be some kind of truce that they signed. There was a big war with the rat creatures a while ago and there was a truce that was signed where they don't enter the valley and all this stuff. But there is an evil that is coming to the valley that is uh, trying to manifest an even bigger evil into the valley. We get a lot of lore about i don't know four books in because it's separated into chapters that are like the books of the uh uh, when you like the smaller books of this so this is about i think it's nine or ten smaller trades all collected in one so it is separated into those trades and there's like each each section has like a name uh and you, you know you get like a chunk and then it'll have a different name and then a different chunk so the first one's called out from boneville then there's the great cow race then there's the eyes of the storm dragon slayer is the fourth one so we see uh we like the way it's separated is very well paced um i didn't feel like it was rushed or anything but basically this valley is getting slowly overtaken by evil at first and then quickly <laughs> towards the middle end of it is it is very much uh it comes on like the villagers and everybody weren't willing to um except that the evil was coming back or that it could come back and so it comes fast when when it's when it's prepared you get you know big battles in this big epic battles you get um you know princesses and kingdoms and dragons and all that in this um i don't want like i said i don't want to spoil everything in this but you get some really good stuff really good drama in the and towards the end of this as well we you, like even between Rose and uh, Rose, the grandma and Thorn, the, the girl, you know, it turns out Thorn is some kind of princess and who is like heir to the throne. And it turns out grandma Rose was, uh, was the original uh, queen of this area. And uh, she gave it up to kind of go into hiding with, with Thorn so that, uh, this evil can't arise because it turns out the evil wants thorn uh the evil's name is the lord of locusts so locusts are kind of a theme in this uh but the lord of locusts wants to uh it was it was entombed uh in the first war that happened with the rat creatures and everything and uh it died or its its spirit is still alive and uh it needs it needs or it wants thorn uh wants her body so that it can come back and uh, use, she's got like these dreaming powers. So it can use her dreaming powers to kind of take over the whole Valley and whatnot. So uh, it's just like a big Epic story. This was so fun to read. Um, it was real quick too. I mean, it was so, so quick that what, by the time I got to the end of it, I was like, I had put it off like, Oh, I'm, I mean, I would read like over a hundred pages every time I picked it up and it is a total, I think it's something like 1,400 pages. Yeah, it's like 1,332. So pretty thick, but I would read, you know, 100 plus pages every time I picked it up. So it was going by pretty fast. And I, I actually waited, once I got to like towards the end, I waited to read all the way because I didn't want it to end. I was like, no, it's it's so good. And I'm like, uh, my friends are leaving if I finish this kind of thing. So it's kind of like when you watch a, uh, a show for a while, uh, on like on DVD or on Netflix or something, and 
you spend a lot of time with these uh, these characters. You start to like them, and then the show ends, and you're like, oh, now I feel like my friends are gone or something. So that's how I felt when this was over. Uh, it has a really nice ending, really sweet. In the back, it said there was some extra source material that you can read, like a book called Rose that kind of goes into the Queen's early life. Um, and you get like a little blurb about from like Jeff Smith from like, like, oh, here's like the first bone I ever drew. And it looks pretty much like bone did, but it's, yeah, it's right here on this back cover. Apparently he drew that when he was a little kid and that was his idea for this character named bone. He drew that in 1965. So that's, it came out in 1991. So that's a pretty long, uh, idea to have. And before you make it into a comic, you know, probably was a kid when he came up with that and then developed the story throughout his adulthood. So um, very cool idea. I really liked that it was a kid story and it stayed a kid story. It didn't get more adult or more violent or like it's more graphic. It, got, it gets more violent, but not as not more graphic. So it definitely uh, can get thrilling at times or the stakes get raised to where you might you know, where a kid might get really into it and feel uh, some anxiety or whatnot for the characters, but um, that's just all in good fun, right? You want you want there to be some kind of drama for them, in order for you know the story to be good. So so um, I feel like Jeff Smith did a really good job in this. Also the 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 and or that not I was going to say animation, but the the drawing in this is so good it feels like animation. Like everything about the cartooning in this is so beautiful. There's lots of really good like blacks, uh, dark. I mean, it's it's only black and white. There's not even gray in this really. So, um, but you get some really good uh, facial. Like he's really good at doing facial characteristics and cartooning where you really get the emotion of the characters. Um, I got to say, Thorne is one of my favorite uh, female protagonists. So if you, you know, want a, a book for your daughters or whatever that has strong female protagonists this is a perfect one for you um and it's like it's a big epic that you can read with your kids and it not it's not too daunting because it is a comic so before you get to lord of the rings or one of those check out bone um they also sell this this is the black and white collected edition there is also a full color edition of this that scholastic put out um, of this complete version and then also they released i think the only uh the only volumes that you can get like in the singles like uh like i was saying like the story arcs uh, of this are color as well from scholastic so if you pick this up in any other trades it's probably going to be in color um and i like the color a lot it's got a different feel it feels more um cartoony or kid to me like that's what we read for the podcast is uh it felt just, I guess the colors, you know, kind of make it feel more uh, for kids. Whereas this being black and white, there's definitely, I mean, obviously the, the writing is for kids um, or is okay for kids, but the, the being black and white just made it seem a little bit more like serious or something. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I liked it better in this version for me, but if I had kids, I might like the, um, the color additions better. But uh, overall, I mean, this was one of the best series I've ever read. Um, I mean, like I said, I felt at the end of it that I was like, oh, my friends are gone. Like, <laughs> So um, for this one, I'm going to have to rate this one a five, five out of five stars. Pick this one up. I mean, this is only, I think it's $45, but on Amazon, it was like 30. So you get 55 comics for like 30 bucks. It's in black and white, but that's how they originally came out. That's kind of how it was intended in the first place. But uh, you could do that or you could pick up the single trades. I think they're like 10 bucks each and they're colored. So if you want the color versions, um, you can get those individually or you can buy. I think the color complete edition is like one hundred and five dollars or something like that on Amazon. So, you know, I, I'm really considering getting that, too, because I kind of want to have both versions i want to read i want to read the color one and this one you know side by side and i want to see <laughs> like what the difference is kind of thing so um it was fantastic it's one of the best fantasy stories i've read it's just so good and, and like when i say fantasy like i said i've read, read lord of the rings 
I've read Game of Thrones. I've read, you know, some of the the grim stuff more. Um, but like, just the the you know epicness of this. It's got a lot more heart and fun than some of those series do. Uh, I you know obviously Lord of the Rings has a lot of heart and fun as well. And that's a story about friendship as well. This is all about friendship, but family as well. It's all about uh, Phone Bone and his cousins and their relationships. And then also Rose, the grandma, and her daughter Thorn and their relationship. Um, so it's just really good. And also there's some other really touching characters that I really, <laughs> I didn't care about at the beginning. And by the end of it, I was like, oh, that's sad or that's nice or what you know, like that, like, there's some some other characters that are kind of side characters that get some nice moments as well. So uh, really enjoy this. Really recommend it. Couldn't recommend it more. In fact, five out of five stars. Um, yeah. And that's going to do it for today, folks. Uh, once again, if you wouldn't mind like, sharing, subscribing, this really helps me out. Uh, comment down below. Have you read Bone? Any interest in reading Bone? I mean, what, what did you think of it? Uh, you, do you plan on reading it? Has it been on your list for a while? I know this is one of those ones. That it's been on my list for a while, and I've just been putting it off because, you know, in my mind, it was a kid's book or something, and it was just kind of on a lower tier than some of the other. Lower priority, I'll say, because it was on a lower tier. I knew it was good comics, but I just – it was on a lower priority than some of the other stuff I was wanting to read. So uh, finally got around to reading it. It was amazing. So – Definitely check that one out and uh, we'll see you guys on the next review.